animal rights activists run towards a pig farm and illegally enter a bar. Somebody has to go in and show the truth. You are the one. You're there to expose, to show people what's happening. We fed this lie constantly about us having the best animal welfare standards in the world, but it's just not true. North Carolina is the second largest pork producer in the country, and its 9.4 million hogs produce around 10 billion gallons of waste each year, most of which gets stored in open lagoons. When storms cause those lagoons to flood, the surrounding communities can literally find themselves in deep shit. When Hurricane Floyd hit in 1999, pig waste from swamped lagoons wreaked havoc on the state's waterways. And during Florence, more than 50 lagoons flooded again. Everyone in North Carolina knows that pig poop can be a big problem. But there's not a lot of agreement about how to solve it. The right thing is to stop what they're currently doing. Stop the disposal of waste. The, the land is not a toilet. We are now facing a future in which a simple scrape can turn into a mortal wound. I began to receive death threats, anonymous calls. Going up against these corporations is dangerous. There was a lineup of people in my office with tears in their eyes. The notion that our food system is the safest in the world is nothing more than a lie. See, Professor Brooks says Canadian pig farmers first bred super pigs in the 80s in an effort to increase pork production. He says when the pork market collapsed in 2001, hundreds escaped captivity. Wild pigs occupy over 700,000 square miles. You know, that's bigger than most countries. And that's a problem for the United States because we already have a massive feral pig problem of our own. There are at least 6 million feral pigs across 35 states, mostly in the South, according to the USDA. They do massive crop damage. The USDA says $2.5 billion per year just in crop damage alone. A couple of years ago, there was a woman in Texas that was actually killed by a group of wild pigs. Guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and today I'm back with another anti-capitalism true crime deep dive video. Today I want to do the pure evil files of the pig slash pork meat industry files. I deep dive into this topic, capitalism, pollution, invasive species, animal cruelty, true crime, etc. Let's get started into this YouTube video, but before we get started, all my YouTube videos related to this topic right now will be linked down in the YouTube video description of this video down below as long as and as well as on the screen right now. So let's get started into this YouTube video. Capitalism's endless crusade for massive capitalism profits means today so many animals are killed that 26% of all meats that enter the United States alone retail market end up in landfills. This corresponds to roughly 100 million land animals ending up in garbage bins. We lose our humanity and our connection with animals when we receive them as only money-making commodities. Capitalist culture fosters an attitude of violence, arrogance towards other species. That ordinates the justification for profiting from the suffering of animals, but it also leads to violence against our own species as well. Research has shown that in towns and cities with abattoirs have higher rates of domestic violence and violent crimes including rape and murder. All animals on factory farms are packed together by the thousands in confined spaces where they are deprived of fresh air, oxygen, sunlight, and any kind of joy. Capitalism is misery. The Animal Welfare Act, despite its name, provides no significant protection to farmed animals' bodies who are used for food, furs, or skins. This means animals such as cows, chickens, pigs, turkeys, Foxes, minks, etc. are not protected by this law. These animals are not entitled to the federal protections of humane conditions in America. Rather than protecting these animals from capitalism cruelty driven by profits, the United States enables fur industry and factory farm livestock animal agriculture meat industry to continue 
what they deemed as common farming practices. A common farming practice is an action that, if it is common across farms, is thereby legal. This exemption takes no stance on whether the action is humane or causes suffering to the animal. There are numerous ways in which farms utilize common farming practices laws to maximize efficiency in their operation without consideration of animal welfare. Here are some examples of only a few different types of cruelty farmed animals are legally allowed to endure as common farmed practices. Pigs. Male piglets, testicles, and tails and teeth are hacked off shortly after birth without the use of painkillers. Mother pigs are kept in gestation crates that are so tight they are unable to turn around. Pigs are in fact some of the cleanest animals around and refuse to defecate where they sleep and eat if given a choice. Even newborn piglets will leave their own sleeping area spots to relieve themselves. They can't do all this and packed in a tight factory farm. Pigs are also very smart as well. Pigs have the intelligence of a human toddler and are ranked as fifth most intelligent animal in the world. In fact, pigs are more intelligent and trainable than any breed of dog. They learn their names in just two weeks. First introduced in the 1960s, gestation crates are used to combine most of the 6 million pigs used for breeding and sows in the United States during their pregnancies, measuring around 7 by 2 feet. These metal cages are only slightly larger than the animals themselves, basically a hot dog. Pigs are considered ready for breeding at just 7 months old. The majority of pigs in the United States are forcefully impregnated through artificial insemination and put in the crates. These crates prevent these sensitive, intelligent beings, animals, from turning around, walking, socializing, or even laying down comfortably. Pregnant pigs have no choice but to relieve themselves where they stand, unable to walk away from their smell of their own feces. Some animals have been known to gnaw at the bars of their enclosures in stress and frustration, creating open wounds and sores. And according to the United States Department of Agriculture, these crates have also been associated with reduced heart function and weakened bones in pigs overall. Frustrated at their inability to nest properly, mother pigs sometimes paw at the floor and push at the crate bars at times to point of wearing down their hoofs and suffering abrasions on their noses. Pigs have a maternal instinct to protect their piglets naturally, but the bars of the fairing crates restrain the mothers as workers take away their babies. Pigs are then impregnated again. A mere five to seven days, the gestation stalls are mostly about cost cutting. They allow producers to cram together as many working sows, pigs as possible, to produce as much capitals and profits as possible. Although these common practices would be considered legal animal cruelty or neglect in animals such as cats or dogs or pets, farm animals are not protected. Pigs are genetically manipulated to grow as fast as possible so they can reach market weight, 250 pounds, when they are only 6 months old due to their unnaturally large size and lack of space to move around. Factory farm pigs often develop arthritis and become unable to walk or stand on their own. They can become trapped in their own waste and dirty feedlots, fostering and spreading pathogens and disease runs rampant. Despite these risks, they are still loaded into crowding trucks and transported via the trucking industry to slaughter. By the time they arrive at the slaughterhouses, pigs are dehydrated and exhausted from the journey, assuming they'd survive it. Many will succumb to injuries, illness, and even death along the way. A typical slaughterhouse kills more than a thousand baby pigs per hour. Animal rights organization Compassion Over Killing has released an undercover video shot at the Quality Pork Processor Plant in Austin, Minnesota. They possess between 19,000 and 22,000 hogs per day depending on demand. Downed hogs are shown being kicked, dragged towards the slaughter area. Some conscious hogs are shown shackled to the conveyor belt chain, while others still alive have their throats slit and are sent to the scalding tank. The video shows documents hogs with pus-filled abscesses that pus could end up on your dinner plate. Factory farm workers are forced to work extremely quickly and slaughter hundreds, sometimes thousands of animals each day. These factories smell like warm blood and bleach. In the spring of 2020, 
massive COVID-19 outbreaks in meatpacking plants shine a spotlight on the daily hazards associated with killing and chopping hundreds of thousands of animals per day, cuts and amputations, dangerous chemical exposures, and repetitive hand movements, stress injuries. These hazards are borne by a predominantly black and immigrant workforce. Look further into the capital supply chain and it's evident poor communities of color are disproportionately pay the price for the world's cheap bacon. The psychological toll on this takes a person cannot be underestimated. Slaughterhouse work has been linked to a variety of disorders, including post-traumatic stress disorder. It has also been connected to increase in crime rates, including higher incidents of domestic abuse and violence, as well as alcohol and drug substance abuse. Studies have also showed higher than average levels of child abuse and domestic violence in communities with abattoirs. There may be microplastics in your meat and there is definitely microplastics in your body as we speak. Cashmore who began posting stomach churning TikTok videos, Moore, who identifies himself as a farm worker, showed the process in which pig feed is manufactured. The videos show old grocery store food, including breads and packaged food, being ground up and mixed in with the feed, with the plastic wrapping still intact as the processed feed and food is ground up. Moore insinuates that the plastic and paper products are being fed directly to farm pigs. The most damning video seems to show workers leaving plastic wrapping on bread before sending it off to be consumed to and to be concerned about the possibility that human food waste is repurposed into animal feed with the plastic and that no effort is made to unwrap that food waste plastic as this would require human labor, which can be too expensive and costly. If this is true, it's shocking. Plastic pollution crisis poses a serious threat to humanity as well as other animals and wildlife and the earth as a whole, mother earth as a whole. As chemicals and plastic products have been linked to dropping male fertility rates, cancer and other serious health elements such as ingesting plastic can cause internal blockages, damage, and starvation. First evidence of microplastics in human placentas. Microplastic particles are found on both sides of the human placenta, both maternal and fetal, for the first time ever. In another case, this was reported in 2018 by a farmer in England and in the UK called Andrew Rock. Andrew discovered blue plastic fragments in the pellets he fed to his pigs. Each bag of pig feed it contained a few plastic pellets which can be seen in the article published in The Guardian. At first, Andrew thought it was a manufacturing error, but the supplier ensured him that was not the case. It was a product that had been manufactured to the accepted legal standards. His story is published in The Guardian newspaper. Shockingly, there has been no changes in legislation as a result of this. Apparently, the legal amount of plastic and animal feed in the UK and other countries in other European countries is 0.15% plastic. This means each pig could legally consume an entire plastic bag's worth of plastic in just four days. Pigs additionally, pigs naturally fed feed on dead carcasses and scraps and eat their own poop as well, which can contain maggots, parasites, microbes, and disease causing transmitting bacteria. Not only is this bad and gross, but eating pork itself is not the healthiest. And come with serious health risks such as eating undercooked or raw infected pork will result in people developing tapeworms, roundworms, kidney worms, etc., a parasitic infection. And in developed nations, pork liver is the top food based transmitter of hepatitis E. Pregnant women can experience violent reactions to the virus. In fact, mothers who get infected during their third trimester of pregnancy face a death rate of up to 25%. Pork also contains high amounts of saturated fat and cholesterol. These fats can 
dem demonstrably worsen the effects of alcohol abuse and cause fatty liver disease. It can also worsen liver health and lead to liver cirrhosis, increased risk of colorectal cancer. According to the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer, the consumption of processed meats such as bacon, ham, hot dogs, sausages, salami, pepperonis, etc. increases the risk of colorectal cancer. Increased risk of bladder cancer has also been found. A study published by the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center found that the recurring consumption of well-done or burnt pork increases the risk of bladder cancer. The study, which spanned 12 years, found that the group with the highest meat consumption were 50% more likely to develop bladder cancer. On top of all this, diseases and pandemics are happening. They report the U.S. pork industry irresponsible use of medically important antibiotics, saying the amount of antibiotics used in pigs and in the pork industry is nearly the same as that used to treat humans. The report estimated that 27.1% of all medically important antibiotics sold in the United States are for pork pig production. The report suggests that the heavy use of antibiotics in pigs is primarily for disease prevention because these pigs live in horrendous, horrific, dirty conditions. A group argues that the heavy use of antibiotics in pigs and other livestock production is contributing to the rise of spread of antibiotic resistance in both animals and people. African swine flu fever first appeared in Kenya in the 1920s. It spread through Spain and Portugal and was halted by killing infected pigs and exposed animals in the 1990s. Outbreaks that occurred in the Caribbean were also eradicated. Nevertheless, pork producers are worried about the disease moving into the United States, so efforts are underway to protect the meat supply industry. Contaminated pork brought in illegally by international travelers is a real threat. Since March 2019, the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, has been using trained detector dogs in airports to sniff out pork. However, if contaminated pork is thrown in the garbage, it could become food for wild feral invasive pigs that can harbor the disease. Pigs are an invasive species as well. Pigs are not native to the United States. Christopher Columbus introduced them to the Caribbean, and other people brought them to Florida and Texas. In Texas, early settlers let pigs roam free until needed. Some were never recovered. During wars or economic downturns, many settlers abandoned their homesteads and the pigs that were left to fend for themselves. In the 1930s, Eurasian wild boars were brought to Texas and released for hunting. They bred with free-ranging domesticated animals and escapees that adapted to the wild. As well, all know by now, everywhere colonizers go, Biodiversity gets fucked up and animals go extinct. According to the USDA study, wild hogs can be blamed for $1.5 billion in damages every year in the United States alone. Pigs that get loose from farms and federal swines will root up and consume native plants and introduce invasive native plants, I mean invasive plant seeds and species to the freshly disturbed soil and cause soil degradation thereby accelerating the speed of invasive grasses and weeds. As it turns out, even domesticated pigs can turn federal in a short order, relying on an ancient boar gene still encoded in their own DNA. Research has shown that using trail cameras to survey and monitor 36 forest patches between 10 and 10,000 acres in size determined that forest patches with federal pigs had 26% less diverse biodiversity mammal and bird communities than similar forest patches without them. In other words, many wildlife species seem to be excluded from areas where pigs are present. Pigs also pretty much eat anything from plants to meat. They are omnivores. For example, one recent study reported that federal pigs were digging up eggs laid by endangered logger-headed sea turtles on an island off the coast of South Carolina, reducing the turtles' nesting sizes to zero in some years. In a well-known case, federal invasive pigs indirectly caused the near extinction of indigenous foxes on California's 
Channel Islands. These pigs have also, they'll devour or destroy whole grain fields. Some farmers planting corn have discovered how intelligent these pigs are and how hogs go methodically down the rows during the night, extracting seeds one by one because these pigs are very smart. North Carolina can't solve its hog waste fecal matter problem. How black North Carolinians pay the ultimate price for the world's cheap bacon. Environmental racism. Eastern North Carolina is home to counties with the dentist concentration of hog farms in the U.S. The smell of money, that's what the pork producers have long called the revolting smell of the pig waste that permeates the air and atmosphere in eastern North Carolina where hogs outnumber people by as much as 35 to 1. But to many black, Latino, and indigenous residents who have to live near the state's giant pig farms, the smell is more associated with nausea, anxiety, breathing problems, and racial discrimination and environmental racism. When storm season hits, hog farms are some of the most vulnerable places in the state because most hog farmers have disposed of their hog waste pollution in massive open pit lagoons. Torrential rains can send hog waste over the top of the lagoon where it washes into rivers and streams polluting them. Sometimes the lagoons themselves breach and the hog waste spills into the groundwater. During Hurricane Florence, both happened resulting in at least 50 flood lagoons and two breaches. Pollution can lead to algae blooms and overgrowth of algae that produce toxins and deplete oxygen levels and supply in waterways, killing biodiversity and killing aquatic life as a whole. Groundwater contamination is an especially concerning problem in rural areas where some residents drink well water and where addressing county lines that could provide untainted water costs money and people don't have it. Catastrophic flooding aside, neighbors of the community say that hog farms also present a regular nuisance to their day-to-day -day quality of life. That's partially because of the lagoons, but also because of how hog farms traditionally spray and dispose of their waste, letting the solids settle to the bottom and spraying the floating liquid into their fields. That means hog feces, hog urine, hog blood are often sprayed in clouds just a few yards from someone's house. For at least herring, that means the stink is also constant. We don't come outside much, you know, and we don't open the windows because of the odor. You can't keep the odor out whether the windows were open or not. Herring is one of 500 plaintiffs suing Smithfield Foods, the world's largest pork producer. The plaintiffs claim Smithfield's waste management practice has stored hog shit in lagoons and then spraying it into fields severely reduces their quality of life. They are fighting for a life free of the stench of 10 billion gallons of pig waste from the state's 8.8 .8 million pigs. The residents of the community was quoted in saying, The smell. You can't hang your clothes out to dry. You can't do nothing in the yard. And we won't even talk about the yellow flies. Children who attend schools near these disgusting waste ponds in North Carolina experience high levels of asthma and wheezing compared to those who don't live anywhere near that them. The residents within one and a half miles of it report elevated blood pressure, eyes, nose, and throat irritation, difficulty breathing, nausea, and chest tightness and pain. Problems that worsen as the odor worsens, one study found that eastern North Carolina residents who live near factory farms experience higher 